Hey everyone, Coach Stefan Rudolph coming to you straight from beautiful San Diego in the winter here, early January, New Year 2020, and being appreciative in life, growing in life, being thankful in life for everything that we have, everything that has happened in our life. As you know from my podcast here on recoveredcoaching.com, what we go through and grow through in life, we have to take with a positive attitude in order to take it to the next level. And I wanted to be thankful today for viewers out there checking this out, uh, people who have read my book, uh, know my story, what I've gone through, gone through and grown through and um, taken life to the next level and being appreciative of overcoming epilepsy, overcoming alcohol, these things I talk a lot about, but really want to push this point today to let you know more about what other people think and what other people are giving us in our life, whether the positive and the negative we have to take with either a grain of salt if it's negative or of course absorb, uh, become a part of when it's positive, have that grow within us, have that seed planted. Uh, the biggest thing here is being able to define your life with your story, create that story in your mind when you want to overcome obstacles, create in the mind and fuel it with the heart. So the story I have that has been, a lot of questions have come up recently in the past month, two months about my epilepsy and exactly how I overcame it. Now, if there was a, a book, which I am writing, but a book actually of steps one through 10 that I could define this as, I would let you know that in step one, it became in my mind that was fueled by the heart that said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of having epilepsy. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired of drinking alcohol, of it diluting my mind, diluting my life, of having the fog in my life, I finally took steps to say enough is enough. And when it came to the epilepsy itself, the people that have asked me have wondered, what'd you do? Uh, basically, and I have these three steps I wrote down. I woke up, I listened, and I learned. Wake up, listen, and learn. And then four step, repeat. Wake up, listen, learn, repeat. I stopped my closed-minded ego from saying, I know everything, I can do everything, I don't need this help, I don't need that help, I don't need this, I don't need that. It, it became over and over that I felt like I knew everything. And actually, when we realize we know nothing, that's about the time that we can and will grow in life. And why I'm bringing you this with my story of the steps I took to overcome epilepsy was more along the lines of being appreciative for what I have in life being thankful for what I have in life, and also just understanding that we cannot control everything. And when things happen to us, we have to, I personally, I had to accept the fact that I need to change my life. What I'm doing right now, I would tell myself, as far as the drinking, as far as the lack of sleep, unhealthy diet, uh, pizza, beer, lifestyle, everything, it was not conducive with health. And I had to accept that. It was a fault in my life that the ego did not want to change. The ego, my ego said, no, everything's fine because things say 20 years before used to be fine. 15 years started falling apart, 10 years, things started collapsing. And in the past five years before my sobriety, it was hell. The Steve Miller quote that I love, I had to go through, we have to go through hell to get to heaven. And I did have to do that. And in 2010, after a brain surgery in 2007, a DUI in 2008, and a DUI in 2012, these steps Along that way, I had an awakening. Even with the fog in my life, with alcohol in my life, I saw Wayne Dyer, I started reading uh, John Astoraf, Tony Robbins, um, Les Brown, all these authors and speakers that taught me and told me that this is what we create in our life is created in our mind. So to be able to fuel my life and take it to the next level, fueling it by saying my life was miserable. I was constantly doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. My ego thought I could continue to do what I was doing and change and not have to change anything. But I knew when Eddie Vedder told me the best lyrics I've ever heard from him, I've changed by not changing at all. And that was his story in his own way. He can change by not changing at all in a positive way. But at the same time, my life was the insanity where everybody was growing around me, growing outside of me, growing, doing their own world, doing, doing their own things in their own world and taking their life to the next level. I was stuck in this mode of never getting anywhere. It was not conducive with anything that I was doing. When I would go to seminars and see Wayne Dyer, um, I would see other people as far as Luis Hay, 
and great speakers that really motivated me. The next week I would still be drinking, still be partying, still be eating fast food and never change anything. I thought, well, I'm gonna read this book or I'm gonna read that and it's gonna do something, it, it didn't. So this step here, the main step is becoming aware, the awareness that we have and wake up, listen, learn, repeat. Those four steps I needed to tell myself over and over when I wake up, just listen to motivational speeches every day. That's my thing on YouTube, uh, positive thinking, uh, affirmations, Wayne Dyer story, Les Brown story, anything and everything, positive motivational speeches. I look up on YouTube. And so when I wake up, I'm appreciative. I'm learning. I'm thankful. I listen to four or five hours of YouTube a day on the average when I'm driving, um, when I'm going through life, uh, just in the gym especially. Those things help me shift my life. After reading also an audible, listening to books from Wayne Dyer, it was a big shift to understand that I don't need this epilepsy controlling my life. So a lot of the times when people are hearing my story about epilepsy, how'd you get off medication? I didn't plan on getting off medication. I planned on being healthy. There's the difference is I don't focus. I wasn't focusing on the medication. I was focusing on what was affecting my lifestyle. What was giving me the seizure symptoms? What was giving me the seizures, the epilepsy? What was triggering it? The stress, of course, lack of sleep, uh, hungover, alcohol in my body. The seizures would actually happen commonly on Monday and Tuesdays would be my worst days. Again, they weren't grand mal seizures. Small malls are different. Small malls, I might be sitting there talking to you and all of a sudden I've got good luck, good luck, good luck, and you can't understand me. It sounds like in my mind that I'm talking straight to you, but I knew in those feelings going on and those, those tingling, the butterflies in the stomach, the tingling that was going on, I knew I was having a small mall seizure and was freaked out extensively by having a grand mal seizure in front of somebody. So if I was talking to you, this type of communication would be, uh, it would break down and you couldn't understand me. That means I was having a small mall. That happened three or four or five times a week, a lot, especially on Mondays and Tuesdays, coming off alcohol because I was trying to get healthy. I would ride my bike to work, I would work out. Um, I would try to stay off alcohol for a couple of days. And in those two or three days, I would have constant feelings of just, of, of death. Small malls to me were like auras and death. It felt like, oh my God, if this continues, I'm gonna die. But it would go away usually 30 seconds to 60 seconds. The small malls would retreat. And I started understanding this more and more. I'm going to think positive thoughts and I'm gonna change my lifestyle. Now I didn't change it right away in 2010 and 11, but going to three Wayne Dyer events before he passed in 2012, shifted my life to another level. He was talking about cleaning up, being healthy, getting off alcohol. I'm along the same lines, and I was along the same lines back then. Cleaning up, getting healthy, and getting off medication was my goal. The medication was for Tegretol, Topamax, Depakote, uh, Keppra. Uh, the list goes on and on to the amount of medication I was taking was affecting me in the side effects, but I knew it was a combination. Not only the medication, but the alcohol, the lack of sleep, the stress, the lifestyle. It was just, and in 2012, when I got my last DUI, and along those lines in 2010, when I had multiple grand mal seizures in the racquetball court, in the weight room, in the locker room, I cracked my head open. I have a scar right here still from cracking my head open in the locker room because I felt that small mall coming on at LA Fitness in Vista in 2010. And I just had to go to the locker room. I didn't want to be embarrassed to have a seizure in front of somebody in the weight room. And I fell down and right on the tile. I woke up to an ambulance and had this huge gashing bloody bruise on my head. Luckily, my teeth are still here, thank God. I could have hit my teeth, broke my nose, but hitting the tile like that, that was a wake up call. Now that was also related, I think it was on a Tuesday, to being hung over, to being dehydrated, to missing medication, and also just lifestyle in general. And the reason I'm bringing this extensive story up is because of the meditation part that came into my life, the awareness, the prayers, the positive thinking, Positive thinking meaning I know I can get off this medication. I know I can retreat and be safe from the seizures by changing my lifestyle. Upon my sobriety in 2012 from a DUI, I was able to completely cut out alcohol, but right along those lines in 2011 and 12, meditation came into my life, awareness of what I was thinking, what I was eating, and what I was drinking. So thinking, eating, and drinking. I'm always doing, that's a TED, that's thinking, eating, and drinking. Uh, doing the acronyms always here and understanding just like TED Talks said, you know, the positive TED Talks. But what I was thinking was, I don't want to have a seizure. I don't want to have a seizure. Did I take my medication? Did I take my medication? One of my last 
grand mal seizures and the major feelings that I had was at work in 2011, I was feeling this aura coming on and I didn't want to have it. And I thought, I missed my medication. I missed my medication. I must have missed it. And I had these feelings. I went home that night and found out I did take my medication. So I said, if I can talk myself into a seizure, I can talk myself out of a seizure. Again, sounds crazy, but the understanding that it was crazy to me, but I had to make it a norm. I had to make the weird become wired. Weird spells wired, those same letters. I wired myself differently. What people thought was weird, getting off medication. I slowly got off over six months, nine months, probably less than a year, I was completely off. I was meditating, I was getting better, I was eating better, I was feeling better. Drinking was still involved in 2011, 2012, October 9th, 2012, beep, DUI, arrested, six weeks in jail, hey, that'll sober you up. Ankle bracelet and all for six months. So that's the alcohol part of it. This part of the story, the, the seizures, the epilepsy, that was basically cured over time over the next year. Never had a grandma seizure again. I, think, I believe my last was 2011 time period at the beach here in Carlsbad, running, trying to get healthy on a Monday or Tuesday, had a seizure. That last one combined with dozens and dozens of small malls that followed. Again, small malls are not blacking out having a seizure. It's just, just blanking out when you see kids have uh, these seizures for 30 seconds, 10 seconds even, and they just go blank. That's what was happening a lot with me. So those ended in 2000. 12, 13 time period, I got off medication, started doing meditation, manifestation, awareness and attitude, prayer and positive thinking, MAP. Meditation and manifestation. Meditating, slowing down my mind, breathing techniques, six seconds in, holding for six seconds, six seconds out, holding out for five, six seconds, and then breathing in again, repeating, repeating. And also manifesting in that time period, understanding that I needed to manifest my destiny and manifest this area of my life that I know can and will be possible. I kept telling myself, I am seizure free. I am epilepsy free. Thank you, God, for everything you've given in my life, for the good things and the great things to come, for the epilepsy that was in my life, for the epilepsy that has helped me in my life, and now for the epilepsy leaving my life. Do you understand that part? Leaving my life. It's gone. I had to focus on this because I said to myself, this is how I define my life with the story I'm creating in my mind. I had to feel it within the heart, feeling it within the heart. This is where my passion is. This is where my action is. This is where my excuses were. Excuses be gone. Wayne Dyer said that. Excuse the excuses out of your life. It's my quote. So the passion was here. It had to fuel it up here. It had the action take place in my body, around me, in the world around me without these excuses. So it's very hard to be hungry when you've been fed. Gary Vaynerchuk said that recently in one of my motiva- in one of the speeches I was listening to about him. He said, it's very hard to be hungry when you've been fed. I was being fed in a sense that every time I had a problem in my life, I had loved ones that would help me out, that would bail me out, that would give me this, give me that, everything that they wanted. My mom was there in my life, but going on 41, 42 years old, I was relying on other people. I had been successful in life in the past, My life had just collapsed over seven years. And this part where Gary said, it's very hard to be hungry when you've been fed. I'd been fed all my life and bailed out and given things all my life. So I said, no, enough is enough. This is where I had to wake up, listen, learn, repeat. That came with an open mind and an open heart. The ego said, no, you know everything. I said, nope, I know nothing. It was Eckhart Tolle too. He had some great quotes, but just shifting my mindset and defining my life with the story that I created in my life, in my mind. I created the story in my mind and I fueled it with my heart. So this, these areas, divorce your story, marry the truth. Tony Robbins said that. Divorce your story, marry the truth. The truth became seizure free, epilepsy free. I am 100%. I used those words for about a year, two years, and I even cut those words out. What is epilepsy? When we think of epilepsy, we think of seizures. We think of grandmas. I didn't want to think that anymore. I thought the best thought to think would be the thought that would change my life, that would shift my life, that would, the holy shift, I call it. The holy shift happened in my life and I said, I'm done. And these seizures got less, the the small malls got less and less. On a scale of one to 10, the one being the butterflies in the stomach, the two, the three, the anxiety, the stress, the tingling down the arms would be a four or five, the left arm, and sometimes the right arm, but ironically I was hit on my left side in football in high school where I had my major coma concussion. And so my right side 
everything would kind of shift into on a level of five, six, and seven. The tingling was all down my body. I feel like I was going to throw up. I was going, I couldn't communicate at an eight or nine. A nine or a 10 was a grand mal seizure. Those were, I would start stopping these at a four or five level and six and seven especially saying, nope, I'm seizure free. It's in my past. Thank you, God, for this. Thank you, God, for that. Everything I wanted to be thankful for. And it would go away. Now I also became aware, what was I eating? What was I drinking? Monster, five hour energy drink, red dye 40, sugar, ingredients, crap that I've said, oh, that's what could have caused this today. I'm going to eliminate that, eliminate this. And now it, within about three years, 2015, 2016, that's about the last time I started having major small malls and I was shifted out of that. And by 16 and 17, now it's just completely gone. I have a, a, not even a one, but just sometimes there's an awareness, I call it, an awareness like, ooh, that didn't feel right. And I'm eating flour tortillas again or something that's not good for me. And it gets just that little feeling. I say, okay, if that's gone, take that on my diet. And those feelings, I want you to be aware of this because those who have epilepsy, those who have seizures, those who's, they, basically those who's ha who have dis-ease in their life, you're not at ease, is because of what you're fueling yourself with, how you're thinking, how you're acting, what you're doing. It's what you think about, you bring about in life. Connecting the dots to form the connectivity for positive outcomes in life. This is far, as far as life coaching, epilepsy coaching, I call it, recovery coaching, whatever you want to call it. I didn't want to escape anymore. I didn't want to hear those sirens behind me of the cops showing up again. I went through my first checkpoint two weeks ago around Christmas time in seven years, completely sober, and I told him my story and I felt good about it. And I want things like that to happen, but I don't want to focus on the past. I don't want to focus on what I was, who I was, how things were, how, things, how I wanted things to be in the future. I wanted what I wanted the most was to be happy in the now. I wanted to turn that word now into one. I have won the moment, W-O-N-N-O-W, and I have to own my moment. It's my own moment, O-W-N, same word. And so I owned my moment in the now, and I won it. I won that moment in the now by being present and being thankful. An attitude of gratitude from Wayne Dyer, from all these people. Again, I'll mention his name a lot. But this shift took place, and that's what I want you to understand this for the epileptics out there. For the seizure people, just be aware of your diet, be aware of what you're bringing into your life, what's causing it, um, and just take it from the heart. Living with Heart is the name of my co-author book with Les Brown. Check it out online, Living with Heart. That's the chapter that I wrote, which is coming to a, a full-blown awakening in 2000. That was in 2005 when I had my accident, a car accident. I had two grand mal seizures in one day and was in a in two car accidents i'm writing a book about this was in two car accidents in the same car um, in the same evening that night and got a dui so two epileptic seizures grand mal seizures three hospital stays jail two car accidents all within about 24 to 27 hour period um, and it could have been a stolen vehicle it was my dad's vehicle i'm kind of throwing this all into one story to say hey manifest your destiny and be able to understand that we have to define the life, our life, with your story, create it in your mind, fuel it in your heart. What I wanted and what I recreated in my mind was a story of wonderment, fulfillment, love, manifestation, um, an attitude of gratitude, positive thinking. Everything I said, I'm done. I'm seizure free after a couple of years, not even just saying seizures anymore, not saying epilepsy. I'm thankful for my health. I'm thankful for my wellness. I'm thankful for everything in my life. I turn my FUs to thank yous, called that, that quote, and I've taken everything to the next level. So this being said, would like to leave you with this note of my program on recovered coaching is for those who are having seizures, for those who have addiction, for those who are addicted to escapism, for those who are addicted to leaving this world and, and not wanting to be a part of it, not wanting to face reality, not wanting to face uh, fear, false evidence appearing real, uh, Les Brown taught me that, not wanting to face the areas of life. So we have that fear. We have that false evidence in our life. This is where I've come from. This is where I used to play Little League at. This is where I grew up. This is where this universe, God, everything created me coming back to this area. I was in California in sales for many years, married, successful financially, but physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, I was lost. So I had to manifest that area back into my life to understand that everything does happen for a reason. I am here for this reason, for your life, for my life, to give good and to fuel yourself with goodness and to fuel me 
in that area of helping you. So if you are inter interested, please subscribe, like, and share this video and go on recoveredcoaching.com. Check out my story more. Uh, go on my Facebook page, YouTube here, subscribe, and we'll be with you. I'll be here um, in the here and now. Remember, I've won the moment. I own the moment. And I am now in the moment. And those three are all the same letters, spelling the same word. So manifest that destiny. Coach Stefan Rudolph, coming to you straight from beautiful Escondido, California, the Hidden Valley in Spanish. Peace.